In this video, we're going to create an interactive button for confirming an action. So as you can see, it has three states. Default one, then when you click, you get a loading wheel, you signal some kind of ongoing process. And then once this action is actually finished, you get a final state with a confirmation, a check mark, and a general color change feedback to signal that the action has been completed. As always, if you want to save time and download the source file for this, check the link in the description that will take you to my store. Now let's take a look at how to create this in Figma. First, I'm going to start with using the text tool to say confirm. This text is going to be all caps, so I'm going to go over here to switch this to uppercase and also include some letter spacing font size i'm going to keep that at around 18 and font um, just pick whichever one you know feels right to you it doesn't really matter but i do recommend going for a simple font uh, with all caps and a little bit of letter spacing next i'm going to select this object and press shift a to create an auto layout i'm going to create a background for this so we're going to go for like dark gray and probably the text is going to be white and i'm just going to adjust these paddings to 16 and maybe do a little bit more on the sides 24 and also around the corners we will get a nice simple confirm button with soft edges and we're gonna rename this button confirmation button, right? Next thing, we're gonna create an ellipse. So right now I'm gonna create the spinning loading wheel. By the way, you can watch a separate tutorial on loading wheels on my channel, where I think I'll go for like 30 with a stroke that is centered and two pixels wide, maybe even four. And then I'm gonna use this little circle over here to create an arc like this and go over here to set this to 100%. This ensures that we have a cutout, you know, an arc like this. And I'm gonna also go over to the stroke setup and use an angular gradient. And then I'm gonna move this point over here and adjust position of these gradient points so that we get the, the full one, the opaque color we get. We move that one to the top, whereas the transparent one is gonna be right here. So this is our loading wheel. I will then click over here with this ellipse selected to turn this into a component. Component is gonna be called loading wheel and I'm gonna create a variant, name this variant one and create another one. I'm sorry, so the previous one, that's actually gonna be two, so zero, two. This one is gonna be zero, three, and finally zero, four. And the first one is gonna be zero, one, or just one. And then I'm gonna select under the second variant, the ellipse, I will rotate that 90 degrees. Then take the ellipse under number three and rotate this 180 degrees. And finally, select the last variant, the last ellipse within that variant and rotate that. Or I think you don't even have to rotate this, but just make sure. Uh, then go, go over to prototype and I'm gonna connect the first variant with the second one. And I'll say after delay, zero milliseconds or one millisecond, change to property one, zero two. And this is gonna be smart animate and it's gonna take 500 milliseconds. I'm gonna do something similar here after delay change to property three, smart animate 500 milliseconds. And finally here as well, after delay zero. And here I forgot to set this delay to zero. So I'm gonna make sure that everywhere there is one millisecond, one millisecond. And also this easing, there's gonna be no easing, so linear. So all of these are gonna be linear, right? And then finally, the last variant, I'm gonna connect that to the first one and say after delay, one millisecond, change to property 01. This is gonna be smart animate, linear, and it's also gonna be instant. So what this should do is create a nice loading wheel. I'm gonna test this, so test frame, loading wheel. Let's see if that works. So we have a nice little spinning loading wheel. We're gonna use that in one of our button states. Right now we can actually start creating the states for this button. So let's take this confirmation button frame and go over here to create a component from this. And we're gonna also create a variant and then another one. This state is gonna be called default. This one is gonna be called in progress. And then the last one is gonna be called finished. And we're also gonna select the whole component and set this property to be called state. 
So we have a property called state with three with three variants essentially default in progress and finish as you can see all of these are the same but this is about to change i'm going to select the last text object and type in confirmed as in the action has been finished then i'm going to go over here to assets and use the loading wheel instance right here then i'm going to press command x select the second state and press command v and as you can see um, it placed our instance right next to the text, but that's something we don't want to see. We want to set this to absolute position and then keep that centered. And also both of these constraints are going to be set to center. Additionally, I'm going to select these three states and set the color to dark blue. So that's going to be our default color for this button gonna be dark blue like this and when this wheel this loading wheel is actually spinning we want this button to be uh to have a disabled type of color so let's make this gray like this and also the confirm text that's going to be gray as well so it's going to be grayed out to signal that hey this button you cannot click this right now something's happening it's being you know disabled something is in the process and under selection colors um, or actually we're going to change that here over at the loading wheel component i'm going to select this gradient and instead of black with both of these we're going to go for white so that this loading wheel can be used on a dark background i'm going to also add a fill here uh, so this fill is going to be gray so just that you can see kind of what we have. I think we could make these colors of the text and of the background even darker so that the loading wheel kind of stands out. Um, I'm doing that right now. So the confirm text is gonna be white with some kind of transparency, let's say 10 or 12 or something like that. And then these loading wheels are also gonna be have a wider stroke like this. I mean, I think this button looks sufficiently turned off, disabled. Right. Then I'm going to use the pen tool to create a check mark like this. It's going to be four pixels, a little bit smaller, and I'm going to paste that third final state. Also going to make sure the alignment is towards the center so that we don't get this check mark moved to the top. And same here. And I'm going to actually move this to the beginning and set this to white. And to get a visual feedback, color wise, I'm going to change the color of this button to green. So we get three button states and now we have to actually go to prototype and set up the interaction. When you click the button, which means on click, change to state in progress, it's going to be smart animate and this is going to take, let's say, 140 milliseconds, right? Then we need to go from the second state, from the in progress state to the confirmed state, but we're going to have to wait a little. So why don't we keep this at 2000? 200 milliseconds so we're going to wait 2.2 seconds which is a little bit longer than one whole spin takes for this loading wheel and then after that's finished they're going to transition to the last state and this one's going to be called this one is going to be ease in and out this one is also going to be ease in and out and then one last one last feature when you click on the confirmed state on click change to state default right so when you actually click the state the last state of this button you're going to revert back to the initial state. Now, I'm going to go to assets and search for a confirmation button and place that onto our test frame. I'm going to rename this test frame and we're going to test this out. And this is what we get. We have a blue confirm button. When I click it, this happens. And after a while, it transitions to this confirmed state. When I click that again, it resets and I can kind of, you know, do this all over again. Um, I think we could make one final adjustment and that would be adding a hover state. So why don't we do that? I'm going to duplicate this state. I'm going to call this hover. And let's say that this hover state is going to be slightly lighter than the default state. So I'm going to add a bit of lightness right here like this, reduce saturation a bit, and then we're going to go to prototype to adjust the overall flow of this. So from the first state, that's going to be not on click, but while hovering, change to state hover. And this is going to be quicker. It's going to be 70 milliseconds. And then when you click this state, so on click, change to state in progress. That's good. Also, let's 
Let's just create an option where you'd be able to adjust the text both of the, of the final state and these states to be what you need. So that means selecting these three text objects and go to content and I'm going to create a default text component property and the value is going to be confirm, right? That's one. The second one that's going to be this one, I'm going to again select this then go to content and under here I'm going to click this icon and then create property. This is going to be called confirmed or let's just say final state text and this is going to say confirm, right? Now you can do this. You can go to default text with this instance on your frame. You can say text one, right? And then when you change that to finished we can set this text to text 2 right so we should get text 1 and then text 2 and now you can actually relaunch this and you can see you get you get a button with text 1 with a hover state as well and then when you click it it starts loading and the action is confirmed with an option to reset this and do this again and that's it that's how you create a confirmation button. If this video helped you, please leave a like. And if you'd like to reuse this button in your own projects, check the link in the description. That will take you to my store. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.